What's up, challengers, and welcome, shady people. I am Gym Leader Geo. I am filling in for Shady Penguin this week in an exhibition match for his week eight of the New York Mankeys in the WBE. His opponent this week is Envy, Lord Envy himself and the San Diego Chim Chargers. Now the reason I am here is because Shady Penguin was very, very busy going into this week. I'm sure if any of you have been following his other videos outside of his draft league videos, uh, he has explained that he's going on a trip right now. So he's been really busy. Envy and Shady tried to arrange a battle really early in the week, but it just wasn't going to work out for Shady. So he was going to have to take a forfeit and a 6-0 loss. Envy didn't want to put that on Shady. He doesn't like to take forfeit wins and he wanted some content to put on his channel and so he asked the league and got approval from Dan and Shady Penguin to have an exhibition match and I was selected as the opponent so I'm just here battling with the New York Mankeys trying to catch a W on behalf of Shady Penguin so uh, if you are a Shady fan and you are new here welcome uh, and if you are a challenger, congratulations on a Gym Leader Geo video uh, when not in regular GBA league windows. So obviously I'm, tr I'm trying to get my setup here to really replicate how Shady does his WBE video. So I'm operating without uh, any kind of background template or framework. I tried to make the screen stretch the whole thing and I tried to do the uh, the chroma key thing that Shady does, but I don't have a green screen. So that wasn't gonna work without uh, the assistance of a program. So do apologize for the uh, occasional scrolling chroma key thing that you're gonna see coming over my face here. Uh, just whenever it shows up, just don't look in my face and then we're good and we're set. So we have done the battle and I am going to be post commentating this. But before we hit play, uh, I'm just gonna go over the team with you guys real quick, kind of like a little team builder just to show you the six mon that I brought same way that Shady does it not really doing a full in-depth team preview just showing the the six mon so you're familiar with the sets and can get into the mindset of my moves a little bit as we go into the postcom all right everyone so here we are at team preview and let's just kind of go over what we're working with here I know that Shady has nicknames for all his Pokemon but I don't know what all of them are so I went with my own nicknames I do know that thunderous is chest day but I wasn't gonna steal one and just go with five unique nicknames so I'm going with all of my own nicknames here and apologize if you built uh, a real close connection with those nicknames they're the same Pokemon guys they just nickname differently because they're Gym Leader Geo style so I'm gonna put a little Gym Leader Geo edge on them so also just a reminder to everyone that even though the Pokemon show up as level 100 in the team preview that's just how they regen and they're gonna be level 50 in the actual match so even though you're seeing even HP numbers here they will be odd when you downscale the level of the Pokemon that we're talking about so let's get started I am bringing a choice scarfed thunderous T here and the reason for that is that I think it fits perfectly into the strategy that I'm going to be bringing against Envy this week. First, before I go over the Pokemon in a little bit more detail each, I'm just going to show you what all six I'm bringing. I'm bringing Thunderous T, Ambipom, Moana, which is the Tapu Fini, I'm bringing Cuddles, the Mega Pinsir, I'm bringing Tree Brad, the Trevenant, and I'm bringing Barbara, the Ferrothorn. So now we can go a little bit more into detail with each. MB's team has a very notable speed split and I played a lot of the strategy of this, of these team buildings around that. So he has several Pokemon above 100 speed. He's got the 104 on the Delphox. He's got the 108 on the Cabalion and he's got the 110 in the Megalodias. But other than that, his team is pretty slow, actually. Uh, and as far as offensive Pokemon, there's really nothing sitting in that range between 100 and 4, all the way down to his next offensive Pokemon, routinely offensive Pokemon, which would be Diggersby. Now, you can bring an offensive Suicune, which is sitting at 80. You can bring an offensive Mandibuzz, I think that's 85. But these things aren't likely. So. When I built the Thunderers, I put very little speed investment. It has enough speed to outspeed a Diggersby, and then I choice scarfed it. And that's higher than the max speed that a timid max speed Megalodios can get to. So I know I'm outspeeding his entire team, unless it's a scarfed Delphox or a scarfed Cobalion or something sets up. That would be the only thing that's going to outspeed a Thunderous. So uh, I scarfed it, I put a decent amount of special attack investment and all the rest into HP. He's running Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, and Sludge Wave. The Sludge Wave is so that I don't run into issues against the Clefable. 
The Focus Blast is because he's got multiple steel type Pokemon that I'm that I really want to be able to take advantage of. And one of them is a very likely switch into Thunderous, which would be the Magneton. Uh, and then also the Diggers B is part normal. So if he's trying to lock me into a Volt Switch, I can predict and focus blast and take him out in one hit. So that's the purpose of the PK Thunderous. Uh, triple T Ambipom to the top, three fingers on each one of those little, I want to call them hands, but let's not do that. They're probably tails. <laughs> Triple T the Ambipom. I really wanted to bring Ambipom because he's a he's great uh, speed control in addition to the Thunderous. Uh, Triple T will also be outspeeding everything on his on MB's team unless they are scarfed. Uh, it was, we got U-turn there, so we got a Volt Turn core. We've got Low Kick again for those pesky steals who would be resisting the Fake Out or Tail Slap stab that Triple T will be bringing. We're bringing Technician because it powers up the Fake Out and it powers up every hit of the Tail Slap. So if Tail Slap is two hits, it'll be doing a little bit less damage than a return would but if it's three hits or more it does more damage than return so there's a the potential for a huge payoff by running techni or by running technician as opposed to skill link which literally only powers up tail slap uh, so that was the purpose of that triple t could be very useful for multiple things uh, it's uh, it's a great check to the like a revenge check to the Mega Latios if things start to go south because we'll be hitting on the physical side. Uh, we can fake out to waste turns on that thing and then be you turning out for momentum. Uh, we have Moana, the Tapu Fini. I love Moana. Uh, I drafted it in Season 7 of the GBA, so I do have a little experience using it. One thing that I've noted about MB's team, he's very fairy weak, so I went with Moonblast, Surf, Defog, and Trick with a choice specs. I can pretty much just click Moonblast very freely. There's not a whole lot he has for it. He does have some steel types, but they're really not... Uh, they're either not specially defensive enough to really deal with it, or they're part another type, which is weak to fairy. So, clicking Moonblast is kind of the goal with this thing, bringing it in whenever I can, especially if I can get it in safely in w on one turn. Bluff that I'm defensive, have him think he's safe to go into something else, and then just start clicking Moonblast. Cuddles the Mega Pinsir. Mega Pinsir's a beast. I had it season 5 of the GBA, and I can tell you it was an MVP at that time. This was before the nerf to Aerialate, but we are running Jolly, Moxie, trying to get some kills with that return quick attack and Earthquake 3 move coverage. The quick attack is really for the speed control, but otherwise Cuddles does outspeed everything on his team barring the Megalodios and the Kabalion as long as uh, nothing gets set up or has a choice scarf. Uh, we do have an Earthquake to cover, again, the things that will be resisting the flying stab which would be his steel types uh, he doesn't have any rock types so we'll be good there and earthquake will handle both of those things provided they're not on a balloon swords dance if i get the opportunity to set up and just sweep the rest of the game last two pokemon are defensive brings i've got tree brad he's not tree beard because he does not have a beard guys come on let's get it let's get it obvious here horn leech and drain punch leech seed and willow wisp we're looking for chip damage we're looking for chip recovery we are running Harvest Citrus Berry uh, with a fully physically defensive set in order to try and take on some of his physical threats that might be very annoying, such as the Kabalion and the Diggersby. It'll be a good switch into both of those things, most notably because both of those things pack neutral coverage for the Ferrothorn and can actually break it. So bringing the Ferrothorn, Gyro Ball, Power Whip, Leech Seed, and Stealth Rock. Again, trying to get a little bit of chip damage off with those Iron Barbs and those Leech Seeds. I've got a lot of physical threats here that can really clean up with the speed tiers that they're in or with their priority if I just weaken the opponents down just a little bit here. So uh, the big goal here is uh, unexpected blowing through him damage, very safe damage with Moana, chip damage with Barbara, chip damage with Tree Brad, uh, chip damage with the Volt Turn Momentum. Once things start to get weakened, I will be uh, handling all of my opponents with the speed tiers I've got here. Um, you won't be able to outspeed PK Thunderous. You won't be able to outspeed Triple T. He won't be able to outspeed Cuddles, and I can just clean up after that. That's the game plan that we're going into here. And now when I come back, I will have the postcom for you guys. And we fade back in on a battle ready to go. We're going to hit play here. It's, uh, it's Gym Leader Geo proxying. 
the New York Mankeys against Envy and the San Diego Chim Chargers. So, let's go over this battle, shall we? So, he's going to lead with the Latias, the Mega Latias, as I'm going to lead with the Thunderous, PK Thunderous. Uh, early on, knowing that this is kind of not a great check, I'm just going to pop off the Volt Switch early. I do this for a very explicit reason. I want him to know I'm Scarfed. Uh, this, when you lead with it, it's already kind of obvious. Um, he's going to kind of scout for it. I want to give him that information because I need him to know. Because that way you can kind of play with predictions. I end up getting a crit here. So, I, I again, the game plan early on is get those chip damages off. Um, one thing here, I know I have the fake out. I see the calm mind. I'm not trying to waste any turns here. I need to be playing around... Uh, what Envy might be doing early on. So while I could fake out here, I'm actually going to U-turn to see what he wants to do. Faking out is just like flat damage, but it gives him the opportunity to make switches. So I didn't want to do that. So I actually popped off a U-turn turn two rather than faking out first. It also bluffs that I might be scarfed on this Pokemon also. So uh, I pop off the, the switch there and I go straight into Barbara because I know that there's no, there's nothing the Ferrothorn can really do that scares me. Maybe knock it me off, but I saw that he didn't have the Magneton. I'm Shed Shell, so I don't need it. So I'm going to click Rocks here. Just get Rocks up right away. Um, he goes into Cabalion. This is a little scary, but I have a Pokemon for this. So I go straight into my physically defensive Trevenant. Um, trying to see what he's doing. I can resist, or I mean, I'm immune to if he goes for the Fighting Stab, which is what would beat the Ferrothorn. But he actually pops off a Swords Dance right away. So, if he Swords Dances, knowing that he's a setup variant, I want to get him burned early so that if he ends up switching out at all, he has nothing to do. Now, here's the thing. I knew he was the Z-Mon, so I could have switched uh, because I know that MB's Steel... Uh, his Z item is the Steelium Z. So I could have switched back into Ferrothorn, but I don't want to risk that maybe he's Double Dance variant and just get seriously swept by this thing. So I stay in trying to get that burn on him, knowing that there is a chance that he KOs me with this move. And it, it, was a, it was a roll. It was a roll. It was in his favor, but it was a roll, and he does end up getting the KO. But here's the thing. I quickly went into PK Thunderous. You can't see it in the post cap. Um, but I did it very quickly because I wanted him to know, or at least presume, I was going to click Focus Blast right away. But I actually clicked Volt Switch. The reason I did that was, if I made that switch quickly enough, he would be scared that I'm going to make the Focus Blast play to take him out. And he already knows I'm Scarfed. But I don't want to rely on that hitting. And so I really wanted to sell, like, you know I'm going to click Focus Blast here and then just get out so I don't actually have to click Focus Blast. So I go into Moana here. Uh, knowing that I can just click Moon Blast safely. He's going to be scared. Uh, I know he's Calm Mind variant, so he's probably not rocking too many attacks to really threaten me out here. So I click Moon Blast as he goes into his Steel type. Uh, but I am very offensive, my friend, and I almost take out the Cabalion in one hit. Uh, he's going to actually opt to sack the Cabalion here, so I am like breathing a sigh of relief, be relief because this thing was a problem. Uh, so I'm just going to clean up pick up that first early kill with the moon blast and we uh we draw first blood here uh so he's calced me he knows i'm uh set up, i'm choice specs uh with my moana he's gonna go into venomoth the behemoth himself obviously i'm not gonna stay in and click moon blast against a poison type like that um but i know that there's a chance that he goes for the quiver here uh, and that's pretty much the only thing I'm really worried about. And a poison type move like a Sludge Wave or something won't take out a Cuddles even after the Stealth Rock damage. So I switch in here looking to pick up that clean kill with the Quick Attack right away or at the very least force him out. I can't risk it here by going for the return because uh, he's got a Quiver Dance. So he's actually going to outspeed me. Uh, I see that he stays in here. So I'm going to click the Quick Attack and he's got the Koba Berry. And he d it doesn't take him out. And I'm losing my mind here because Koba Berry, Quiver Dance Venomoth. And he's packing the HP Rock and Cuddles goes down. Now that's an amazing bit of prep uh, from Lord Envy himself there. Uh, and so I'm going to go into Triple T here. I really, I really cannot mess with this thing. So I'm going to just click the fake out. Just try and pick up my clean damage. He's going to switch out. Uh, he's, I already know he's going into this thing. He's revealed it earlier. We know it has Rocky Helmet. This is the perfect opportunity for him to get more chip on the Ambipom. 
but I'm really not too worried about that. Ambipom can, it doesn't really need all of its health pool. Uh, I'm just going to U-turn here. Um, if best defog wants to actually go for defog, that's fine. I still have the opportunity to get up rocks since I do still have my Ferrothorn. I'm going to go back out into Moana here. Uh, see what he wants to do, and because, again, I know that Moonblast is a free click for me, and he does not really have good switch-ins to it. So he's actually going to go for the knockoff, and I'm starting to think this is probably a good thing for me, being able to switch up the moons. So here, of course, I'm just going to click Moonblast. No reason to click anything else. No reason to predict the hard uh, switch or anything like that. He's actually going to sack off his best defog. So this leads me to believe that maybe he's got uh, a setup in something else, um, but he just ends up going out into Obama Snow. Obviously, I'm not playing around with Obama Snow. This thing has stabs that are very difficult for Shady's team to switch into. Uh, I'm predicting the grass stab here, so I'm in, I'm going to switch out into Barbara, predicting like a, a leaf hammer or sorry wood hammer or giga drain or something like that he's gonna click the blizzard which is a fine neutral hit against me i am specially defensive that's not gonna two hit ko me even after the chip damage from the hail he's gonna withdraw uh, and go straight out into his behemoth just to sack it if i'm gonna go for an attack here um, and if not then i might give him the setup opportunity but of course i just clicked gyro ball i'm not gonna mess around with the obama nation threat that thing is too powerful and too scary to just leave on the field uh unchallenged so uh the venomoth goes down and what we've got left is diggersby the mega eon and his obama snow down to just three pokemon left on his side I can't stay in against this thing, he will take me out, and I'm feeling pretty good here. So I go into the PK Thunderous knowing that I do outspeed it, and he's actually going to predict that and click return. This man is nuts. I calced it, I knew that return would not two hit KO the Ferrothorn, and I could have taken that thing out with a power whip, but he makes the prediction and he actually takes out my, my PK Thunderous. Uh, I needed Barbara, I needed it because it can take another Blizzard from the Obama Snow, and that was my only chance. Uh, of winning. I need the Obama Snow to go down. And so he ends up switching into Obama Snow now against uh, my Ferrothorn because as I come back in, knowing that he's locked into the the return, I needed to get a Leech Seed off there if I wanted to live two of them. So I clicked Leech Seed, he makes a prediction, goes into the Obama Snow, goes for the Blizzard, it's a roll, he gets the roll, and uh, Barbara goes down. Now. I still have a chance here, but it kind of depends on what he thinks my remaining Pokemon can really do, like what their coverage moves are. I go into Moana, um, knowing that I can take a, 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 a grass attack. I'm going to click the Moon Blast here, trying to pick up the kill. He does go down, but unfortunately... Knowing that the Diggers B is uh, Choice Scarfed right now, he does have the speed in his favor. I need to be able to get a some chip damage off on him if I wanted to be able to take him out with two Technician Fake Outs, but there's no way for me to switch into the Ambipom and then back out to get two of those things since I did get unlucky. Uh, or not unlucky, there was an amazing prediction made by MV to catch the Thunderous T. So unfortunately, he did put himself in a situation there where it was... I, I had to predict that turn correctly, and I predicted that he wouldn't make the out-of-his-mind play to uh, assume that my Thunderous was coming in. But he played amazing. Great read there, and he does end up picking up the 2-0 W um, as I fail to get the critical hit and take out... The Diggers B with the fake out. Mega Eon still alive in the back, and so he picks up the 2-0 victory. I uh, just want to say thank you, MVGG, for the amazing game. And Shady, sorry I couldn't nab you a W uh, as your exhibition fill-in, uh, but hopefully you prefer the 0-2 to the 0-6. That's all I got for you guys today. Please do leave a like and a sub if you want to see more of my content. I upload whenever the GBA or whatever draft league that I'm playing in is in session. That's all I got for you guys today. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers and the shady people. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.